I mentioned the two routes already. There are two uh, Neolithic routes from uh, mainland Southeast Asia into, uh, sorry, from mainland East Asia into uh, island Southeast Asia and, uh, and the Malay Peninsula. Um, and these have been pointed out by a number of archaeologists, including Peter Bellwood. Um, but uh, I'm using here a, what I think is probably the, the clearest diagram of uh, how these two different Neolithic spreads uh, interact with each other. And this is from Atoll Anderson in 2005. And uh, he describes Neolithic 1, which uh, comes down the Malay Peninsula from Thailand, uh, associated with the uh, basket and cord marked uh, ceramics and uh, Neolithic 2 which comes out of Taiwan uh, a little later um, which is associated with red slip pottery and the, uh, the pottery the rice uh, comes down with Neolithic 1 and uh, appears around 5,000 years in the um, inclusions in pots um, in North Borneo around, as I say, around 5,000 years. Uh, rice doesn't appear uh, very clearly uh, with the Neolithic II uh, until a lot later. Um, now the two Neolithic spreads coming down uh, uh, mainland, uh, down the Malay Peninsula or down through the Philippines uh, do get together and uh, interact uh, in the uh, Greater Sundas, that's uh, Borneo, Java and Sumatra, uh, and in Vietnam. Uh, so uh, that, that describes the, hopefully, uh, overview of the, uh, the Neolithic spreads. Now we can see these uh, in the genetic uh, movements. Now, first of all, there's, uh, there is a movement um, uh, between 8,000 to 6,000 years ago up into Taiwan and the Philippines, which I've already described. It includes uh, mainly uh, half the group E. Um, but uh, really quite early on uh, in, in the Holocene, we've got movements into Taiwan from China or of a number of different lineages. And the uh, that's shown in this peak down, uh, down here on this uh, diagram. But as well as the, uh, this, uh, this movement uh, into the, uh, the north, uh, we have uh, a movement out of uh, Indochina into, into Borneo um, of these two lineages, which uh, that's B5, uh, B1, B5A, um, which may be associated with movement of rice. There's, there's no other candidates. Um, so there are genetic components uh, of, uh, for Neolithic 1 and for Neolithic 2. I've mentioned already the M7C3C, which comes down from Taiwan, ultimately from China. But there are a number of other lineages. And the, uh, these, uh, these lineages, which come from Taiwan, ultimately uh, amount to about 20% of the ancestry of Ireland and Southeast Asia, as far as my country of DNA is concerned. Uh, so uh, uh, there, are a, uh, there are these two routes. One of the things to point out that neither in the mitochondrial evidence nor in the um, autosomal evidence is uh, any strong evidence for a, an important movement of the Neolithic II from Taiwan actually getting into the Malay Peninsula. So most of the Neolithic that we find in the Malay Peninsula is coming down from the north, uh, genetically as, uh, as well as culturally. Uh, the M7C3C, which uh, comes out uh, around 3,000 years ago from uh, ultimately from Taiwan, does get into uh, Melanesia um, near Oceania, but at really fractional levels, and so there is. There was much more a cultural movement uh, at that time, 3,000 years ago, into the Pacific from Southeast Asia than the genetic movement. There's very little evidence for uh, a strong genetic movement at that time. However, there was a uh, very clear genetic signal of movement into the Pacific uh, 
um, which uh, is uh, of B4A1A. Now, B4A1A does not come from Taiwan. It actually comes down the Malay Peninsula from, uh, from Indochina uh, around uh, between nine and 6,000 years ago um, and spreads throughout Southeast Asia uh, going north into Taiwan and east into, uh, um, into the Pacific. And it arrives in the Bismarck Islands in Papua New Guinea at eight and a half thousand years ago. Um, and this is shown in another paper of ours, which was uh, published in 2011. And this founding event uh, in um, basically in New, New Ireland um, is dated, that's that branch there, is dated to uh, eight and a half thousand years ago. So people are moving by sea into uh, uh, Island Melanesia eight and a half thousand years ago, long before the Neolithic. And the, the importance of this lineage is that it's, uh, it's the precursor to the Polynesian motive, which is by far the most uh, common uh, signature lineage of Polynesians. So put all that together, Polynesians come from the Malay Peninsula. So uh, <laughs> not from Taiwan. Okay. Um, now to summarize uh, some of the those, those arrows and uh, branches, uh, these, these are some heat maps from our, uh, our papers. They're, they're a bit hard, hard work to go through, but I'll try and go through them as easily as possible. So if we look at uh, Neolithic II, to start off with, the distribution of the lineages that come out of uh, um, Taiwan and uh, contribute 20% in island Southeast Asia, are in Taiwan, the Philippines, uh, Wallachia particularly, but also in a particular island uh, off the west coast of Sumatra, Mentawa, uh, which is interesting in that it's a very traditional society. They've never grown rice. Uh, they uh, eat traditional uh, jungle sago, uh, but they are Austronesian speaking and speak an isolate language. Uh, so if they did come from uh, Taiwan, they, weren't, uh, they didn't come to grow rice. Uh, so, it's, which is an interesting uh, thought. Uh, if we look at the Malay Peninsula in terms of this Neolithic II coming out of Taiwan, there is very little to see there. Um, so the, the uh, contribution is very, is very small, as I mentioned before. Looking at uh, Neolithic II using our autosomes, um, as I say, the autosome is much less geographically specific, so uh, Neolithic II on, uh, in mainland uh, East Asia is just a big plot there, and it's not very specific. Um, uh, but uh, its uh, its contribution to the Malay Peninsula uh, is, is is very little. If we now go to Neolithic one, which is the one which comes down uh, the Malay Peninsula, uh, the distribution, and this is looking at mitochondrial DNA. Uh, the distribution is uh, is in um, uh, in China, particularly. Uh, the uh, southern part of Vietnam, and uh, it uh, has a strong representation in the Malay Peninsula. And uh, somewhat similar picture, uh, no, I should, should say, also say that it does move on into uh, um, island Southeast Asia. Uh, for Neolithic one, as described by our autosomes, the ones that get diced and spliced, uh, the distribution of uh, apparent ancestors is slightly different in uh, North Mainland, uh, South, Southeast Asia, um, and the concentration of movement is, is to Java. And so there certainly is a component um, which comes into the Malay Peninsula. Uh, the last couple of uh, slides are. Again, looking at the autosomal evidence, um, but using a uh, rather blunt method called admixture, which basically tries to divide populations uh, into a number of different groups um, based on the uh, gene markers that they share. Um, and uh, it should be as simple as that. Um, 
and so that's probably the best way to understand it. It, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't use trees, uh, it doesn't tell you about the direction of uh, the admixtures which have occurred, uh, and it doesn't give you the date. Um, so this is setting the number of possible populations uh, to three for this region. Um, but we also include reference populations, so that's Africa and India. So that's uh, the Yoruba tribe, which are always for some reason used to represent Africa, um, and that's India. And so, so these, these colours represent those uh, gene types where they're found elsewhere. The red is Northeast Asian, and the green is Southeast Asian. And if we look at the, uh, oh yes, the blue is Oceanian, appropriately. And you can see that the Oceanian branch uh, types are also found in the Philippines as well as uh, in Southeast Asia. And this is a heat map of Northeast Asian and Southeast Asian, and it's, uh, Northeast Asian and Southeast Asian for what it's worth. Um, again, it's not geographically very specific. If we increase the uh, uh, the number of possible populations which are described by this uh, admixture program uh, to 10, uh, then uh, we get an altogether more complex picture. So uh, yes, we still have the African and Indian populations uh, and clearly distinguished from all the other uh, the East Asian populations. Um, red now describes Northeast Asia and Northern China. Blue describes uh, South China, um, and Northwest mainland Southeast Asia, that's uh, Yunnan in, the southern, in southern China, and uh, Northwest uh, Thailand uh, show great complexity. Um, uh, but uh, green is, is characteristic of uh, this Northwest uh, mainland Southeast Asian population. Um, but they also share um, North Asia and North China um, gene markers. Uh, and as you can see, as we get into Southeast Asia, the complexity just goes right up. Uh, you have very complex populations because of a very complex uh, settlement history. Um, now, there's a grey area.